What's up guys, I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Week in Review for May 18th, 2020. For those of you that are new here, Week in Review is a weekly video that I do on Monday where I gather all of the previous week's news coming directly from CIG or the Star Citizen developers and kind of pile them into one little bundle and insert my little opinions into it as well. Uh, I'll quickly say that I'm going to apologize because it is raining really bad out there and there's also some ma massive thunderstorm sounds. So if we get any loud bangs, I apologize uh, throughout the video. But we're going to jump right into it because we had a jam-packed week. We had two patches this week. So for patch notes updates, we had a 3.9.0s patch on the PTU. And this was a really minor patch in, in the sense of what the actual fixes were or the goals were, but it was actually a really major patch for some of the things that came into 3.9. It was just there to fix persistence issues, and that was what was plaguing a lot of people's accounts, and it was basically a fix to try to um, make sure they nailed that down for the 3.9.1 release, which is now on the PTU, so let's discuss that. So there were some feature additions, but most of them were Arena Commander and Star Marine stuff, my guess is this has some relation to whatever's going on with theater of, Theaters of War, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. There was also some ship changes that came in, and a lot of these changes, I, I kind of put them in, in a bulk on the side there, is uh, what ships can equip and what they can't. And uh, a big standout for me, actually, was that the Valkyrie can equip other guns now, so you're not stuck to all ballistics on the Valkyrie, which um, can make that ship a lot more fun in 3.9, uh, so that's kind of cool. And then a lot of the meat of the 3.9, and in general the 3.9.1 or the 0.1 and 0.2 patches are bug fixes. So I'm going to go through a few, but the, the list is a laundry list of bug fixes, and um, not all of them actually worked, so we'll talk about that as well. The main concern for me was the lack of stability in 3.9, uh, and there seems to be a lot of fixes related to that. So the PTU for me so far has held up very well. Leave a comment below and let me know how the PTU is holding up for you guys if you're playing it. Another big issue which plagues my hardcore account, if you guys don't know what that is, uh, I'll leave a link in the description below, but basically I made like a little rule set of uh, for myself to play Star Citizen and make it more interesting, was duplicate ships. And I have no ability to spawn any ships on that account anymore and that should be fixed, so we'll have to see what happens when 3.9.1 goes live. I'm kind of putting that account on hold until it does. Uh, we also have a lot of shoulds, so there are still issues that are said to be fixed or should be fixed in the 3.9.1 notes. Uh, specifically, trains are still reproducing multiple trains in the same area. NPCs are still standing on top of uh, chairs when, th when they said they were supposed to be fixed, so... Um, you know, always take the bug fixes, especially when they say should, with a grain of salt, because they're still trying to work those issues out. Uh, Virtue, that is in the game, turns neutral when you've completed jail properly, when previously I think it kept your Virtue and didn't change it. So if you go through and actually work off your sentence by working in the mines or letting your time work out, then your Virtue will go back to neutral and you will be able to see uh, lawful and unlawful missions. Uh, VoIP. There's a big issue with VoIP. I don't know if you guys have heard it, but um, when I'm in a party or in a, in a separate group, I'm hearing people in global chat talking to their friends or in other people's parties talking to their friends. It's very odd. So uh, that going away is going to be a big positive for group play. And they also brought back the no questions asked terminals so you can sell your slam. Finally, uh, there was actually no places to sell slam in 3.9 initially. Uh, now moving on to roadmap updates, uh, I know we said we had <laughs> jam-packed action uh, for the video today, but as far as roadmap updates go, I think this is the calm before the storm in the sense of not actually things being pulled off. I think we had a lot of that last week, and I think the week prior, but uh, I think we're going to start seeing those little things that people are working on uh, that are going to be added to 3.10 and see what we actually get there. So it might be a week or two before we see some progress going on with the roadmap, but this is that calm period. I think we're starting to see the ebbs and flows of how uh, their development works a little bit more through the roadmap updates, and this is just one of those calm areas. It doesn't actually mean that things weren't being worked on. Uh, if you look at the Reddit roadmap, uh, there's some progress being done for 3.10, and there's some obviously downward uh, arrows, which means more jobs were allotted uh, as well. 
Moving on, we had some, this is where more of the jam packness is, is in video updates. And starting out with Inside Star Citizen, they did a feature on shaders, and the team explains why they're important, and what they were using from the start, and what they're doing now. Where it comes to life is the materials. And since the start of the project, we've just been adding to uh, our base shader, which we call the alum shader. But we didn't build it from the ground up, so it was type of the decisions that were made in building that, we, we couldn't really change without breaking existing assets. We decided to build a suite of new shaders and uh, to have more specific purposes. And that shader is called the hard surface shader. And as per usual, the limitations of older, older tech just didn't work for them for the level of visuals that they were trying to achieve. So they had to make something from scratch. And as usual, this probably took more time than they wanted it to, but it will make things easier, easier in the future. And actually, this is probably going to be the theme of today's show and maybe the thumbnail as well. I, I, I have to think about it. But some examples of these things were clear coats, uh, also wear and tear and iridescence. Uh, iridescence looks weird to me. I, I don't know. Leave a comment below. Let me know which one you like the most wear and tear. Maybe because they started with the mole, I don't know, you know, but wear and tear is the one that I think is going to be really cool. Using your ship and seeing that it gets used and the ability to like clean it up is, it, I, I don't know, I think that's probably pretty neat. Uh, and then uh, tints are another thing. So tints are another addition that they plan to add and they explain this here a little bit. The big thing from being converted to that hard surface shader is it allows us to do tint variants very easily for each one. What we wanted to give controllers is to be able to um, tint them layers and control them layers uh, so that we can then present more options to the design team and the end user. Each layer we use on our hard surface shader can be tinted one of uh, three different colors and then three colors are defined in what we call a tint palette. What the tint system will allow the designers to do is once they work out, usually with law, what the colors are for say a faction like either Microtech or Crusader or Nine Tails, then they can set those colors up and then save that as a tint. The ease of adding these fleets to the future is pretty sick. Uh, like think about it this way, is that with the, the tints, they don't have to actually paint and see what looks good on each individual ship. They just have to create a tint for a certain organization, certain faction, and then just place that tint on that ship and your work is done. Right. So um, personally, I really hope we get access to these tints for our organizations. Uh, and speaking of that, they mentioned a little something here, maybe. So the hard surface shader has been coming for a long time. Uh, it unlocks a huge amount of potential for the vehicle team. Uh, we're really excited to see what we can do with it and what we can push. But what does that mean for you as players, uh, especially in regards to customizing your vehicle? Uh, we're going to have a nice post on the website in the next a few days, probably next week. It's going to detail what you can and what you cannot do, both in the shorter and near term. So I highly recommend that people check that out. Now, I am staying cautiously optimistic for this because they're going to mention what our limitations are and what our limitations from what we can use. And if we know CIG, they like to sell things. My guess is there's going to be some things that we have access to and other things that we don't. My guess is that we would have some access to tints, but we'll have to see in the future. Moving on in the show, they went into an update on prisons, and uh, we're going to start out with what their fixes for the short term are. Obviously, there's been speed runs that have, have got out in three minutes, which was like... The way they did that was quite embarrassing. In the next patch, I just blocked up two, like, I, I think quite in ingeniously, like, blocked up the two main paths that we didn't want them to take. I'm sure they'll find some more and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, but it's something I'm not going to spend the rest of my life kind of patching up. <laughs> we are looking at the things that get you into prison that shouldn't. There's a few things like misdemeanors giving you like crime stats and that obviously isn't uh, the way it should work. So you'll no longer get crime stat for running, blowing by the police and not stopping. All these changes seem pretty reasonable. Obviously, they want to make sure that the escape from prison is the proper difficulty uh, in terms of actually working off your sentence. And 
We obviously don't want to end up jail in jail for the wrong reasons. So looking at all the different edge cases, which they said we were going to experience uh, when 3.9 came out and kind of resolving those for 3.9.1 and the near future is uh, really great. Then they touch on the more like the nearer future, which is 3.10 and what they plan on changing for that. So for free 10, our focus is on um, finding new ways to earn merits and new things to spend them on. Um, in 3.9, you'll notice there's a commissary machine and that gives things out for free. But our focus is on kind of turning that into our prototype, a, a real vending machine that you pick and choose and pay for the items. The way we are trying to like introduce content that gives merits is through like the prison itself giving out jobs. So every now and again you'll find that one of the oxygen dispensers deep in the caves breaks down. We put a marker on it and then like the first player to get there and fix it gets a load of uh, merits. A better commissary makes so much sense. The idea of commissaries in shows like Orange is the New Black and Oz and anything, any other shows and movies related to prison. Commissaries play a big role, so they should in Star Citizen as well. And then the idea that more jobs in prison to make your time there a little bit more engaging and unique and I guess fun, even though it's supposed to be sort of a punishment, makes a lot of sense as well. Uh, and that really did it for Inside Star Citizen for me. But as always, the link will be in the description if you want to check out the show yourself. Uh, SCL was from the level design team. And the first question that they gave were was can we get signs? And for me, the answer ended up being a microcosm of why Star Citizen's open development can be so infuriating. Um, but it makes perfect sense at the same time. So rather than doing that, we are waiting for the tools to become available for us to uh, automatically seed uh, various boards in inside the stations with uh, whatever content is coming down the corridor or whatever it might be. And uh, as far as I know, we actually have an early prototype that is working already. This is something that we've heard many times, is that they, they're really planning on doing everything to a tier zero standard and then coming back and bringing it. And this is likely why things can be a bit boring and repetitive and it's understandable. And I need to be reminded of it every now and then. And I thought that that would be a good reason to add things into here as well, is that um, as, as infuriating as they're doing things sometimes, I think we all know deep down that they're at this point, you know, let's not take like 2014 through 2017 into into a uh, play here. But since then, they seem to be doing things in a reasonable fashion. And, you know, there is no argument against trying to do it this way for me is is let's put the type of content that we want into the game and then let's polish it later. It, it kind of does make some sense to me. But I also do feel that there are some minor tweaks that can be done to make our gameplay a little bit more interesting. So, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's tough, but you know, that's that's the, the game we're playing, right? Now, moving on to other updates, we have a very big week coming up and it's Invictus Fleet, uh, Fleet Week, Free Fly, all that. You know, say that t 10 times quickly, it's kind of difficult. But the first thing I want to touch on is high flying demonstrations. Um, Let's get real here, guys. It's almost definitely cinematics. I really wouldn't expect any of these things to be in game. Um, I think some people are speculating that, that there's going to be some flybys in game, um, but we can't even get an NPC to sit down in their chair and walk around properly, let, a let alone get a real freaking air show. You know what I mean? So I really don't expect it to be too much, um, but it's really just an R Corp convention thing, uh, which we've had in the past. So you take the train in R-Corp, the other, the other train than you would to go to the normal place, you know, and, and it's actually in the post uh, how to get there. And it starts on May 22nd, and it goes through June 1st. And each, every two days, they're going to switch the convention space. So on May 22nd and 23rd, they're going to have Tumbrel, RSI, and Origin. And a free fly coincides with this. So if you're new to Star Citizen and interested and looking to check it out, Free flies are where you can sign up for an account and try the game for free. So as always, there is a link in the description to sign up for an account and you can give it a try starting May 22nd. Uh, and the free flyable ships during that period is a 325A, an Aurora LN, a Connie Andromeda, a Connie Aquila, a Connie Phoenix, and an RSI Mantis. So the 325A is a combat ship, the Aurora LN is also combat, and the Constellation 
uh, variants are all multi-crew ships with turrets, and the Phoenix is a luxury one. And then the RSI Mantis is probably the most unique as it's a quantum enforcement ship, which means you can prevent other ships from going into quantum travel. Then on May 24th and 25th, we have the Anvil uh, show, and the flyable ships are the Anvil Arrow, which is a combat ship, the C8X, which is a little snub fighter, the Carrick, which is the big, big uh, hunking multi-crew ship that is uh, for exploration, but for now it, it really feels like a command and control center in Star Citizen as far as how it feels. The C8X actually goes inside of it. Uh, the Gladiator, which is a missile boat. The Hawk, which is an EMP uh, bounty hunter ship. The Hornet F7C, which is a civilian version of the Combat Hornet. Uh, the Hurricane, which is a, uh, I guess you would call it a turret boat, I guess. The Terrapin, which is a scanning ship. And the Valkyrie, which is a, a drop ship uh, that has a lot of guns on it. It's a lot of fun to fly. And then May 26th and 27th, we have Aegis, and that has the Avenger Stalker. Titan and Renegade, the Stalker and Titan are pretty standard, uh, just Avenger, three guns, some cargo space in the back. The Warlock is the EMP version of it. The Eclipse is another bomber. The Gladius Valiant, Valiant is a light fighter. The Hammerhead is a huge turret ship. It's a four turret guns on the sides and one above and one below, I think. I, I don't know how many turrets are on that ship. It's quite a bit. Retaliator is another bomber. Uh, then the Saber and Saber Comet, which are both just uh, different variants of a combat ship, a medium fighter. And then the entire Vanguard series, which is the Harbinger, the Sentinel, the Hoplite, and the Warden, uh, which are all different variants. The Sentinel is an EMP ship, the Hoplite is a drop ship, and the Harbinger and Warden are two different kind of combat variants. Then May 28th and 29th, we have Argo, uh, Misk, and... Cru not Crusader. Um, Con Consolidated Outland, sorry. And the Argo MPUV, which is just a little tiny runabout, has no quantum drive. The Freelancer Miss, which is a missile boat Freelancer. The Mustang Delta, which has um, fire and forget missiles, I think. And the, I think that's what you call them, I guess. The Razor EX, which is a racing ship. The Reliant Tana, which is a combat version of the Reliant. Actually a pretty good fighter in 3.9. The Starfarer Gemini, which is a missile boat Starfarer, which is pretty awesome. And then the final... Uh, convention, I guess, is May 30th through June 1st, and that is Drake. And they give you the Buccaneer, which is a combat ship, the Caterpillar, which is a big cargo hauler, the biggest we have, the Cutlass Black, which is a, a jack-of-all-trade ship, and the Cutlass Red, which is a um, search-and-rescue ship, but it's more on the um, medical side, medical ship. Uh, the Dragonfly Black, which is a little motorcycle, I guess, and the Herald, which is completely useless at the at the moment, but it's supposed to be an info runner when that comes in. On top of this, we're also going to have a hologram hall, which will allow them to put the ships that are not currently in game, but have uh, some art done in the game so we can check them out, as well as they can size them down into smaller areas and keep performance up. So the huge Idris that we got to look at before, uh, that was awesome. But I think the idea of putting a Javelin and an Idris and, and ships that are, are to come in the future uh, in the Hologram Hall makes a lot of sense from a game design standpoint. And uh, moving on from that, Theaters of War is coming. So there's going to be playtests in the future. Uh, it's been leaked enough at this point. There have been playtests uh, going on in Evocati. Actually, people were, were leaking it in my stream. I had no idea that they were going on. Um, so uh, I kind of got caught off guard by that. I was like, oh, okay. Um, but there will be playtests in the future, uh, we believe. It's just keep an ear out for it. Uh, they're going to be posting things, and that's what this post is kind of telling everybody. Uh, and also, there are feedback threads going on almost every week at all times, and I do want to make sure that we provide those during these weeks in review. So right now there's a feedback thread on rock scattering, specifically on the surface, because they know it's an issue for people using ground vehicles, that rocks are everywhere and bumping into them, and it gets kind of frustrating. So they want to hear our feedback on that, as well as broken text strings. So if you see any weird broken text in the game, to let them know. And guys, that is going to do it for this week's episode. I really appreciate you guys watching today. Leave a like, leave a comment, and make sure you hit subscribe for more weeks in review. And uh, just a, another side note from last week, all the positivity that came from, uh, you know, my little 
sob story at the end of last episode was really awesome. So I really appreciate all the kind comments and I, I love this community we're building. So um, yeah, if you haven't yet, stop by Discord, check us out. Come check me out on my live stream, twitch.tv slash salty Mike. We stream every day but Monday because I work on this video for you guys. And um, yeah, we just do a lot of Star Citizen stuff. And uh, I've been having a great time. So come check us out. Hopefully we'll have our hardcore up count uh, to, to rock and roll with. That's been a great time. And we'll catch you guys next week. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for watching.